Hey guys, it's Cecile. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys who don't know me, I'm an incoming sophomore at Brown University and I'm actually moving back in like three days, which is really scary, really exciting, you know. And basically, I'm still double majoring in biology and history as a pre-mod and I basically made this channel to share with you guys the advice that I wish I had known before applying to college, as a high schooler, and all that kind of stuff. Mostly because the college application process is super long, super stressful, and hard to navigate. So I'm here to kind of get you guys through all that and to make it all make a little more sense. But today we're going to be talking about the common app essay mistakes you need to avoid making on your essays. So essentially to give you guys some background, I have reviewed hundreds and hundreds of common app essays and other essays. And this is through Notable Narratives, which I will talk about later, some third party things, and then also through that YouTube video where I once posted and said like, hey, everyone who DMs me can get their essay reviewed for free. And then 80 people DM'd me. So yeah, I have a lot of experience editing essays and honestly it's not just experience because a lot of the people I work with end up getting into some really great schools. And I will say that through these essays I've noticed a lot of the same mistakes over and over again. And you just start to pick up on that and honestly I think that these are the mistakes that are pretty little that people don't really talk about a lot, but they honestly can make a huge difference in your application. So this video isn't going to be one of those videos where it's like, make sure to proofread your essay or make sure to write multiple drafts or oh, make sure to use imagery instead of just listing things like you guys know that I'm going to tell you the things that you don't always know about. Alrighty, so as promised, I'm going to talk about mobile narratives for a quick second because I do think it could benefit a lot of you guys. So essentially, this is a program I co-founded with another student at Brown because we're really passionate about educational equity and everything. And the whole idea of the program is giving FGLI high schoolers completely free college advising from FGLI college students at top schools. FGLI means first generation and or low income. So you guys know what low income means. We are defining first generation as either first generation college student, meaning your parents did not graduate from college, or first generation American, meaning your parents are like immigrants, refugees, whatever. You are the first generation in America. You also only have to be one or the other. You can be either first generation and or low income. You can be both. You can be one or the other. And international students can apply as well. So essentially through this program, we will help you with everything from brainstorming to editing to finally submitting your essays. Last year, we helped over 525 different students using over 80 different advisors from top schools. And in the end, using the results from our end of year survey, one out of four students got admitted to an Ivy League or Stanford. And all this is completely for free. So it's just to help you guys and to pay back to the community and everything, especially the FGLI community. So if you do want to sign up for this, there's a link below my bio and in the pinned comment. So let's just get right into the video and the very first mistake I want to talk about is over describing and this is when a student writes a bunch of different adjectives in their essay like a bunch of positive adjectives and basically tells the reader what to think about them they'll say something like I'm super responsible I'm super caring I am a leader stuff like that those statements rather than letting the reader infer all those positive traits about them based on the events that they talk about in their essay the issue I have with this mistake is it's so easy to just tell someone that you're responsible, caring, all those great adjectives. Like literally anybody can say that without any proof to like back up what they're saying about themselves. However, I would much rather read an essay where, I don't know, the person's describing how they started an initiative at their school to help low income students who couldn't afford lunches. Because while reading that essay, I will basically derive all these positive traits about them. And I would think like, wow, this person is so caring. They are so responsible. They're such a leader. Like while reading this essay and getting to learn more about them, rather than someone just telling me like, oh, I'm all these things and I just want you to believe it from me because I'm telling you that. If you've already written an essay, go back through and just make sure that you're not listing out all these characteristics about yourself and expecting the reader to believe it without anything to back it up. And just try to transition from listing all these great adjectives to just describing a situation that would present yourself in this positive light and have the reader infer all those great positives from that description. So the second mistake is also a super duper common one and it is using too many adjectives and adverbs and just really fancy words to get your point across. So to show you guys what I mean, I've written two example sentences which happen to be about tree climbing, which is something I've never done. But here's what I mean. So this first sentence might sound better to you just because it has a lot of words in it, but it's actually not. So, I adventurously grabbed the long, dark, and rough branch and propelled myself upwards against the fast and powerful wind. Super descriptive. Now you know exactly what I'm doing, and it sounds like I put a lot of effort into this sentence. However, I could have easily said something just like, I grabbed the closest branch and swiftly propelled myself upwards. 
The second sentence saves so many words and it just gets the exact same point across. You should only include information that is super important to the reader for them to know and all these adjectives and adverbs and stuff sound really fancy but a lot of the times you don't really need them. And along that line you also have to be careful using words like extremely and very and stuff like that because oftentimes those are just there as a word filler and the word that is also usually something that you could remove. Overall, people just have a lot of words and sentences that they usually don't need to have. It just gets better if you condense everything and then save those words for just adding more information overall to your essay. This third mistake is also another one that can help you reduce your word count. And this is when basically students say the same exact thing in multiple sentences rather than just saying it in one. And so just like I said earlier, you're only supposed to include descriptions and details that have essential information for your reader. However, a lot of the times I will read essays and they will just have a ton of information about the exact same thing and people won't realize it because they're rambling on and adding like descriptive new sentences but everything is saying the exact same thing in a different way so for example i read a lot of theater based essays and a trend that i usually notice is people describing how nervous they are like before going on stage and everything but usually you don't need an entire paragraph or like four or five sentences describing like how your hands are sweaty, how your heart is racing, and like describing literally every sensation going through your body and that huge amount of space in your essay. And usually you can just condense that down to one or two sentences because that's just information that the reader doesn't really need that many sentences about. And it'll just save you room and it'll basically help your reader just get the point in a quicker time. Quick way of testing if you have this issue in your essay is basically going through and saying like, Oh, if I remove this sentence, would it affect the structure or flow of my essay? Would you still be able to get the point? Because a lot of times you'll do that and realize like, oh, wow, that was just like an artsy, like second sentence that I didn't really need in conjunction with the first sentence. Or maybe you could combine two sentences and take out a couple words and it will mean the exact same thing. Just do not waste space on things that you do not need to waste space on because you only have 650 words and you need to make the most of them. So I know a lot of you guys are high school seniors or just high schoolers in general wanting to learn more about Common App essays and essays in general and how to improve your essay writing skills, but also how to improve your college applications as a whole just so you guys can get some pretty great scholarships or just get into some really great schools. And for that, I have a really great resource that I recently heard about called Hi Emil. Hi Emil is a super cool website with tons of engaging on-demand videos for classes. And this includes AP classes that your school might actually not offer. In addition to the fact that the videos are taught by energizing professors who truly care about the content, you can actually take these courses for credit using this premium option and get an Emil transcript for classes that you can't take this semester or at your school. Overall, High Meal is a great platform, especially for showing colleges that you can handle that extra workload. And the best part about all of this is that the entire platform is free for the month of September. That means you can access all of High Meal's videos and all that kind of stuff. And although you can't get college credit for this one because it's the basic option that's free, not the premium option that you do have to pay for. You can learn as many things as you want and try out all their different subjects and just essentially try it out before you do commit to it and decide to pay the money to get the premium feature and to get all that cool credit and everything. And also, once you do decide to commit and buy a package with High Meal, I do have a code, Cecile10, that you can use to get 10% off. So I really hope this resource helps you guys. Okay, so now going back to my tips and everything, another mistake that I see people making a lot is making their intro paragraph way too long. I know that I tell you guys to have an attention grabbing intro that will reel your reader in and get them engaged for the rest of the essay. And because of this, a lot of students try to extend that intro or add a giant metaphor that just keeps going. But the thing is, a lot of the times if you need to explain that metaphor that deeply or you have an analogy, but it takes up a ton of room to like explain and keep reinforcing and stuff, it's really not worth it. Because in reality, your intro shouldn't be more than like maybe one fifth of your essay, maybe a fourth if you're pushing it, if it's a really good intro, because there's so much that you need to cover and you really shouldn't be going over 200 words for that intro because there's so much other stuff that you need to talk about. So just be wary of that for the future. So sticking with the whole metaphor analogy idea, I'm moving on to our next tip, and that is basically to avoid basically adding a metaphor analogy at the beginning in the intro and not referring to it again throughout the essay or at the end of the essay, basically not bringing things full circle. 
I always talk a lot about using analogies and metaphors and stuff like that to spice up your essay and just make it more engaging. But the most important thing is not to have it be forced because then if it's forced and they just add it into the intro for the heck of it, it just makes me wonder why it's there because it really served no purpose and ended up wasting a lot of words. Now, if you're familiar with my Common App essay and if you're not, I linked it down below in the description if you do want to watch it. Essentially, I started talking about how I was afraid of mushrooms because I had an irrational fear of mushrooms, which I still have, and I didn't like seeing them or seeing them on food or just like in general eating them or watching other people eat them. Like, it's a big thing. I don't know. I talked about that in the intro and it does lead into a lot of other stuff that I can't really describe without reading my entire Common App. And although I introduced that analogy at the beginning and everything because I compared mushrooms to eyes and then God's public speaking and stuff like that. I did reference it again at the end because I said, although I still prefer my pizzas plain, my life is now anything but. And that sentence tied the reader's attention back to the intro where I was talking about mushrooms and how I like plain pizza and everything. I don't like having mushrooms anywhere. And then I move forward to the, my life is now anything but by talking about how engaging and enriching my life is now that I've overcome everything that I talked about throughout the essay. So that's just an example. And if you're not familiar with my essay, this might not make that much sense, but you just have to make sure that things are full circle. The very last tip I have is about assumptions. Do not assume that the reader knows about everything. Like you can't just assume they know about how competitions work. You can't assume that they know how you went from point A to point B. You have to explain everything and just make sure that you give your essay to someone who might not know anything about you maybe because that does give you like a second eye so that they can be like, oh, I have no clue what this acronym means or oh, I have no clue what this event in Science Olympiad is. Like you really have to explain things and just assume that you're writing for an audience that has no clue what any of your extracurricular activities are or any of your interests and stuff like that because sometimes people do have niche interests and they just assume that people know what they're talking about in their essays but I guarantee you that that's not always the case. You do have to be wary of who your readers are because a lot of the times even with very modern things like TikTok and like fun trends and references and stuff like that you do have to remember that although you might have a really young and hip admissions officer that knows exactly what you're talking about and totally picks up on those jokes, you might also have that really old like boomer type admissions officer who will not get those jokes and will not appreciate it and would like some more detail. Like you can't cater to everyone, but you can make sure to explain things and not just assume that people know what you're talking about. So oh, yeah, I think those are all the tips I have for now, but like this video and let me know in the comments if you want a part two, because I can definitely add to this and give you guys some more tips, especially for like supplementals and like specific schools and stuff like that. Like I'm more than happy to record more videos. I really love doing it. And I just hope that this helps someone out there and DM me if you have any questions. I'm always on my phone and I will check Instagram. Even if it takes me a week to reply, I will eventually get to it. So yeah, love you guys.